extension from the DevSeed guys and what they've been doing um, and their great work. This is a slightly different take on it, um, you know, where they said they didn't want to mess around with uh, with ODK and with some of those those other libraries and those other languages. We sort of jumped right in and did that. Um, so I'm Dale. I'm from the American Red Cross, um, and we use OSM in a lot of different ways. Um, and so we wanted to build tools um, that sort of reflect the way that we the way that we need data, basically. And this all goes back to the Haiyan, Typhoon Haiyan, a couple years ago, where we sent out field data teams to do data quality assessments, basically. And we discovered that, you know, paper's not the best survey tool. There were a lot of data that was lost. There was a lot of data that wasn't really collected that well. And so we came up with some recommendations. And one of those uh, here was, um, you know, a better tool for data collection, sort of number two on that ground assessment list. And when we sort of dive into this and uh, looking around for funding to do this, um, everyone kept saying, you know, just use field papers. Field papers is great uh, for OSM data collection. Um, but we've sort of built a, a really good, robust um, team and a lot of training resources, and we've trained a lot of people about how to use ODK. Um, so we really we didn't want to go the field papers route. It's, it's a little difficult. As we found out from our friends at the World Bank, who've done a lot of building surveys uh, around the world in their Open Cities project, this is one of the forms that they, built, they filled out um, in DACA. And we're going to be working in DACA. Actually, the, the, the funding from Open Map Kit is coming from USAID as part of their Data for Action Award. And we're going to be working in DACA to do this, uh, to do the application. So why DACA? Um, so to give you an idea, San Francisco has a density of about 6,000 people per square kilometer. Um, New York City is about 10,000. Dhaka is the densest city in the densest country in the world at 43,000 people per square kilometer. Um, that's 75% more dense than Hong Kong. Um, and it looks like that um, for miles and miles. Um, it's, a, it's a really big city. There's lots of people here. There's lots of people that really need help. And we try and, at the Red Cross, focus on vulnerable people. And there's lots of people that are vulnerable in DACA. We also are constantly told by, um, by the government, uh, by the Bangladesh government, that there is great data in, um, in, in Bangladesh. And you know, they have it, and they'll, they'll gladly give us uh, that data. We've heard the same thing in Haiti. We've heard the same thing in Rwanda. We've heard the same thing in Tanzania, in the Philippines, and basically everywhere that we work. Um, Getting that data both into uh, a license that is uh, usable for us, into a format that is usable for us, um, and even on a USB stick that we can actually carry the data away is next to impossible. Uh, just forget APIs. They don't exist. Um, data usually doesn't largely exist. Here you're seeing basically the map compare of DACA. So we have a lot of the building collection that's been done by the World Bank. On the far right, you can see that line where they basically stopped doing their surveys. And then you can see Google and Bing um, as well. I was actually quite impressed by the Google base map here at DACA. It's pretty good compared to the no other cities where we work. Um, we also, it's really hard to get hazard data. This is what passes for a good map of hazards uh, in DACA. Um, so like taking this map and actually doing something with it to inform communities um, that are living in really, really dense slums is really difficult. So I OMK. Uh, Existing OSM mobile applications are kind of terrible for this. Um, you know, there's a great app that we use all the time for disaster situations called OSM AND. That is great for routing. It's great for putting a base map on somebody's device. Not so great for uh, OSM data collection. Vespucci is another one. That's a dedicated editor. It's great. It's fine. But um, the chances that you will muck up and do something wrong are way higher than the chances you will do something right in Vespucci. Um, We've also, I think, figured out how to do remote data collection for OSM. Here you're seeing a before and after of a um, sort of a split screen of a city in, uh, in West Africa. And I don't remember what city this is. But this is from the Ebola outbreak. We can basically map through the power of volunteers and crowdsourcing, partnering with the humanitarian OpenStreetMap team. I don't know, a city of 200,000 people in 24 hours. Um, we can do that really, really quick, quickly. But we need to add more data to it. Um, sort of what we call the color of the map. This, the lines and polygons of remote mapping is really just the black and white version of what we need. We need to add in all the extra valuable local sourced data from field surveys. 
We're also being driven by a project called Missing Maps, which is a project started by the American Red Cross, the British Red Cross, Medicine Sans Frontiers, and the Humanitarian OpenStreetMap team. And this project is really looking at both engaging remote volunteers here in step one, but then in step two, uh, engaging local volunteers. So locals are mapping their own communities. Um, and to that degree, I'm taking the beta version of OpenMapKit, which, which is basically barely functioning at this point. <laughs> uh, and we're going to be using it in Harare um, in a few days' time to actually do field collection, to do some field testing. And then that third step, of course, is to make decisions by humanitarians. So this better data feeds into humanitarian decision making, feeds into better government decision making. Um, we also, um, we're not doing an iOS app. We have no designs to do an iOS app. Stop telling us to do an iOS app. Um, where we work, there is no iOS. I've never seen an iPhone once in any of my days in the field um, on Red Cross missions. So it's usually at this point where um, we've gotten the funding and then I start to freak out that, you know, uh, I don't really know Java, I don't really know Android development, I need to find some help, uh, and our help happened to be the guys at Spatial Dev, and they were, they've been really good, they sort of understood our humanitarian context, and they got up to speed on ODK and on OSM really, really quickly. So after a lot of whiteboarding, uh, probably more whiteboarding than I'd ever done for a single project before, um, and a lot of whiteboarding and erasing parts of the whiteboard, and then trying it again and then erasing parts of the whiteboard again, uh, we arrived at this. Um, it's sort of, it's, we, we've really focused on the sort of the blue parts of this thus far, um, sort of making sure that there's a really good mobile app that we can test, and then we're going to slowly build out the server pieces and the data verification pieces as we, as we go on. Um, right now, it is, it is a fully functional app. It is fully, you know, you can get everything unloaded onto the phone. You can get stuff pushed to OSM. So ODK has this idea of buckets, um, and that, at least that's how we sort of train uh, people to, to create surveys. When you make a survey, you don't want to have an open-ended survey. You don't want to say, um, you know, some question that's a free text field. Free text field is basically survey death. Um, so you want to, like, push people into buckets. And OSM has the same idea in that you have standard key value pairs for tags. So let's take advantage of that same key value pair tag and push people into buckets, right? So let's push people into the, into the um, answers where we want them to go. We also really wanted to be friends. Uh, we did not want to fork ODK. We did not want to sort of branch it or do anything else that would not allow us to get more uh, ODK goodness as it, as, it, as it evolves. ODK 2 is going to come out in uh, later this summer, we've heard, and our application sort of is, is prepped and ready to fit right in when ODK 2 comes out. So what this meant was that we had to sort of really look at how we did, how we were going to put OSM into the app. And after a lot of thinking about it, uh, we decided to do OSM as its own custom media type. So what this means is that in the f we're not storing sort of GPS routes or GPS um, sort of data into, into the ODK form. What we're actually doing is a, creating an OSM file on the phone and attaching that to the form as it gets submitted. It's actually a really, really elegant way that we can do this, and we can track sort of all the OSM data over time. So a normal XLS form has three, maybe three tabs on it. It has surveys, choices, and settings. We've added a fourth tab here called OSM. And that OSM tab is really important because it allows us to do our own sort of, you know, bucket creation of data, or of answers, actually. So this shows the basic uh, survey. You can see here there's, you know, the same sort of stuff you would see is Wowzers. It's really exciting stuff. Uh, I'm just going to turn that up. Give me a heart attack. Okay. Uh, so, let me... Um, so you see on the form, you see, you know, we have the name of the interviewer, right? We want to know who's asking the questions. We see who has the, um, who has the, you know, take a picture of the building so that we can have that data for later. And then we have this idea that we have to see this question that says OSM and then building tags. So how this works is that OSM is our, is our media type. So you, uh, we're just putting that in the, in the beginning. And then building tags relates to 
Well, so interviewer, normal choices, right? Building tags relates to this. So if you can see here in building tags, uh, at the very top, we then put all of our questions, basically put all of our, our, our responses. So you get household number, streets, buildings, amenities, all that kind of stuff. But the important part here is that so you get building tags and then you get building. Well, we wanted to be able to ta define what type of building tags those were. So you see sort of this cascading effect. So building tags equals building. And then if it equals building, well, these are the options that you have for building. And the same thing for amenity, same thing for these sort of uh, other ones, so vertical irregularity, soft story, the building materials, all that kind of stuff. So the demo. OK, so let's see if we can get this to work. OK, so. Oh, this is going to be quite difficult. Actually, here, let me do this. OK, can you guys see the, the Android phone there? OK, so this is my actual phone here, just to show you, OK? So we go into ODK Collect, and whoop, let's reset this whole thing here. So if we go into OK, ODK Collect, well, we're going to just go all the way back. So here, this is ODK Collect. We actually had to rewrite some parts of ODK Collect to make sense of this, because it doesn't know what OSM was. So we've mucked around with a Java Rosa and with ODK Collect itself to understand what the OSM is. I can't explain all that stuff. If you really want all the technical details, talk to Nick. Um, we've worked really closely with the uh, folks at ODK so that we're not, again, forking this. We want those edits to go straight into ODK. And uh, we've, we've been assured that once we sort of uh, get our code to a certain point, uh, they're going to bring these straight into the master branch of ODK. So what you're seeing here is going to be for everybody. Um, so we're going to go and we're just going to fill out a blank form. Here we have one for Harari that I'm going to be doing next week. Just same thing as ODK. You know, you get your note about the survey. Name of the interviewer. So here, I'm the interviewer. Again, same, same uh, ODK workflow. Right? We're we don't want to mess with ODK. And then we're going to launch the open map kit. So here we're going to ask a question about a building. And this is really the important part of like how do we how do we get people to click on the right building? How do we get people to sort of interface with that map? So Open Map Kit sits outside of, uh, oh, well, that's great. OK, here it goes. Um, so now we're loading the OSM file into the application. And once you do this once for one survey, um, you can go back to the same survey and, and ask over and over again. And you don't have to keep loading these OSM files. Okay, so now we've got the now we've got the map, and you see the sort of slightly different color buildings here, right? So these are through the power of Android craziness. These are the surveys that we've already answered. So these buildings are colored differently, but if I were to go to say this building here in the middle, I can see all of its tags, and now I'm going to go in here and edit it. So now again, we've just keeping with the same ODK workflow. We're now answering questions about OSM. So this building is a residential building. We're going to drag it. Its name, building, right? The house number, 123. Street address, I don't know, Main Street. Its city, Harare, right? Postcode, I don't know, 12. And then its building type. What kind of building is it? Oh, well, I think this is a, well, we said it was residential, so let's keep that similar. So let's say, well, it also has a residence in it. Building levels, it's three stories. Vertical regularity. That's like, you know, if it's got something sticking out the side, basically, that looks like it's going to fall off, which is very common in parts around the world. Um, a soft story. So this is also very common. This is, also, this is really, really important. A soft story for us is, uh, in a lot of places, especially in Dhaka and Bangladesh, they'll build a three-story building. And because uh, you only have to pay taxes if you complete your building, then what they do is they build walls for a soft story um, and then don't finish their building. So they don't have to pay taxes. So it's actually, it's, it's technically a four-story building, but they've just sort of not finished it. And what they'll do is they'll go, oh, I got some more money. And they'll go and they'll finish that story, and then they'll build another soft story on top of it. So it's not a building sort of with any sort of, uh, sort of, I don't know, 
structural, good structural design or architecture. It basically is just a bunch of pancakes stacked on top of one another, and that's what happens when those garment factories collapse. So we want to know sort of that those buildings so we can identify them so we can go work with them to sort of maybe inc increase their, improve their building standards. So maybe this is a soft story building. Building materials, let's say it's, I mean it's brick. Building condition is average. So now we're all done. So now we just save it to ODK Collect. Now you see the OSM file here. We're saving that out. And we're going to go and we'll just save the form and exit. So now we just completed a survey. Now we can go on to the next building and then the next building and the next building. Um, so the idea is that we can do, we can cover a huge areas uh, with folks using both phones that we purchase and with other phones uh, that they bring to the table. Because again, Android is anywhere. This will run on basically any version of modern Android. Um, so that the volunteers can show up and, hey, I'm going to map my street and I can, I can fill out a survey that we've given them and they'll, they'll be able to clean it, clean it and give us the data. Um, so the other piece, oh no, let's see if we can make this work here. So one of the other things we wanted to do is, and there was a lot of talk about ONA and FormHub. Here you're seeing sort of the online. We've, public, we've pushed this form to ONA, um, sort of in, a, in, in their staging area so that we can play around with it. And then they've gone one step further and we've seen, uh, we've now sort of entered into a map interface where we can click on and see the data itself. And you can see the OSM data there. Now the really important thing is that now we have the OSM data, we've done this, and we want to field verify it maybe, uh, have, have somebody that knows OSM a little bit or maybe a senior, senior team member or something like that look at the data. We'll go and we'll download the OSM file. So I've now downloaded the OSM file, and now I'm just going to, for right now, I'm just going to open it in JOSM. And in JOSM, I can see the building. And I can see that basically, you know, I did fill out any of these tags. But in this building, I filled out a lot of tags, right? So this is where we're at right now. The current, uh, the current plan is to sort of, uh, is, was to get the, the app where it is now. Now the piece is to build the OSM piece, so they're integrating it into uh, sort of a, a moderated workflow and making the app itself sort of submit straight to OSM, um, if that's possible. It is possible. Um, so we do have a lot of work left. Um, our goal is to have this completely finished um, sort of mid to late April um, for, our, for our sort of our real application, the real project that we're doing in DACA. In the meantime, we're going to be using this in Harare, like I said, next week. Um, we're going to be using it in Rwanda. We're going to be using it in Tanzania. We're going to be using it, uh, hopefully, in the in the in the Philippines. And we've also heard tale of other people sort of already using it, uh, putting it on their phones, and looking to use it in other places as well. So again, we can download the OSM file, the CSV, or whatever. One of the important things for us as the Red Cross is that everything that we do. Um, you know, we really, our principles, you know, of humanity, of universality, of neutrality, like we really try and live those things in all the things that we do. We've pushed all of the source code for all of the stuff that we do um, onto, onto GitHub. Um, everything that we do is, uh, is available, any software that we develop is available on GitHub. Take it, please, please take it, make some changes, some edits and some updates and send those back as pull requests. We'd love that. Um, but we are very, very much committed to open source. Um, I also, so if you like OSM and you like sort of these, these data problems, I really encourage you to attend the State of the Map uh, US at the UN in New York. Um, it's going to be a really, really great time. Uh, there's going to be lots of different sessions about a range of different things, humanitarian, non-humanitarian, uh, you know, really uh, sticky licensing issues, all kinds of stuff. Uh, and last thing, always map for good. Uh, you know, I used to be, what I say, it is an evil consultant. Um, not all consultants are evil, but yeah, you know, some, some are. Uh, but always map for good, sort of keep that, um, what you're doing. And, and, you know, if you had a really bad day at work, uh, you know, you can always trace an OSM and make yourself feel, feel better at night. Uh, that's what I do. So with that, thank you.